So the next one is a little bit more involved. It is destroying things with bullets. So earlier on in the semester, we uh, built a gun and it shot some bullets out. And now we are going to have enemies that we can attack and have them, you know, die. Let's check. Let's get into it. So this capsule here is going to be my enemy. And if we hit play, I can pick up this gun and shoot at it all day long. Nothing's going to happen because I haven't built functionality to do anything else with it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to build another interface. And I want to name it I damageable. So anything that can be damaged, whether it's an enemy or a crate or a building, anything else that you know can take damage, I want to build a script for that. And we use I to specify that it's an interface and then what kind of action or property it it dictates. What kind of behavior it uh dictates so yes anytime all right so we don't need these and we're not going to inherit from anything and it's not a class it's an interface and it won't use start it will have a public int uh, for health and we'll use get and set And then we will have a public void take damage with an input for amount. And that's our interface, two things. It needs to have some health and it needs to have some uh, method that says take damage. Okay, and we're not allowed to use public, so we'll take that out. And we're golden. So on our capsule, let's go ahead and add a component named enemy. We'll create a new script named enemy. So let's open this up and let's give it its public int health. Get and set. And then in void start, we will specify that health is equal to 10. And then in void take damage. Let's go ahead and make this public because I want to have the bullet hit this and then give it some amount of damage and call this script from the bullet. So int amount. And all we're going to do is say that health minus equals amount. And if health is less than or equal to zero, destroy this that game object. So whenever this function is called, it will pass some amount in. Um, we can even give it a default value of zero if we, you know, somehow forget to set an amount uh, that that might defeat the purpose, honestly. So health minus equals amount. So if we give it five damage, health goes from five from, from ten to five, and then from five to zero, and then it destroys itself. So let's see if we have any errors. Nothing related to the scripts that we have. So finally we need to build a bullet. And I believe that my weapon script, my slug thrower, um, does not have a bullet that it shoots, so I'll have to build one from scratch. So I am going to build a 3D object sphere. I'm going to set its scale to 0.3 by 0.3 by 0.3. Uh, maybe 0.2. I'm going to give it a rigid body, not a pigid body. Rigid. 
Um, and I want to set the collision detection to continuous. Uh, that way it's uh, better about catching, uh, catching when it hits. Um, by default, it doesn't update often enough, and sometimes it can go through things. But if you update the collision detection to continuous, uh, it does a better job of colliding with things. Uh, and we'll add a component uh, called bullet. So let's just build a void on collision enter script with a collision other. Uh, the, the, the general is to, to use this as call for collision. Uh, we, can, we can use that too. So if call.get component Um, I damageable. Ooh, I wonder if this will work. Uh, does not equal null. Call dot get component. I damageable. Dot take damage. And we will build in a public. Well, not public. Let's serialize. Uh, int damage amount equal to, I don't know, th two. And we'll pass this damage amount into here. Collision. So I guess I could add a game object. Okay. So collision dot game object dot get component i damageable does not equal null. And so if it exists, right, if we shoot something that doesn't have that, then this if statement won't run. But if we shoot something that does have an I damageable component, then it will run and it'll call take damage and it will go. I don't know how efficient this is going to be because we're calling get component twice every time we hit something. Um, I suppose in any case, we need to set this to destroy this that game object. So if a bullet hits anything, we should just delete it. Okay, so let's test it out. So here's our bullet. There's our enemy. There's our damage amount. Uh, we could probably do some kind of tag that would get rid of one of those. Uh, but let's see if this works first. Uh, oh, right, I forgot to tell my gun to shoot specifically that bullet. So here's the sphere. I'm going to create a prefab. And then my slug thrower script needs to be edited so that it has a serialized field. Uh, rigid body bullet. Uh, bullet prefab. And then we can go to game object ball. Instead of create primitive, we can say instantiate bullet prefab and then bullet spawn dot position and bullet spawn dot rotation. Cannot convert rigid body to game object, so rigid body. And we don't need this. And we don't need to scale it down. I should probably just be commenting these out. And we don't need to change its position. And we don't need to change its rotation. I don't think we do. We'll see. Um, and we'll say ball.addForce. Mm -hmm. Can shoot is false. Okay. 
Let's see if that gets the job done. And we can delete this prefab from the scene. Select our slug thrower, drag our bullet in, and hit play. Let's see if it shoots the right direction. Good grief. Okay, it shoots. That's good. Uh, it does kind of destroy itself uh, when it hits something, so that's good too. Um, but it is not destroying anything. Hmm. Uh, so let's go ahead and try that tag method. So I'm going to select my enemy. And I'm going to add a tag for I damageable. Save. Sign it. And edit the script. Not the enemy script, but the bullet script, right? Uh, yeah. Bullet script. If collision .game object dot compare tag I damageable. Edit at game object. The component I damageable dot take damage damage amount. Um, so let's do a couple of debug dot logs in here to say. Attempting to damage something. So this capsule has an enemy component. Um, we can go ahead and add a uh, debug.log here as well. It says, I am taking damage. Uh, we can even put it right below health and update what health is. Um, health is now just health colon. So let's see if either of these show up in the console. So I can pick up the gun, I can shoot very far, I can shoot other things, and I get a no reference exception. Okay. Line 13 of bullet.cs. This doesn't work. So I have been looking at my player controller script. And I implemented the item script a little bit different. And I'm going to attempt to do the same thing here. Uh, so I'm going to build a variable of the type I damageable. Um, and I'm just going to name it to be damaged. And I'm going to set it equal to this value here, collider at game object get component damageable. And then I'm going to say to be damaged dot take damage damage amount. See if that makes any difference. Let's make sure that the enemy aha the enemy doesn't inherit from I damageable. I'll take my code back and see if that's why. Enemy comma I damageable. You all probably knew that already. All right. Turn play mode off, turn play mode back on, and destroy the enemy. So let's make a bunch of these. Um, five hits per, per enemy. And attack, 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 attack. Just like that. Uh, there are other things I like to do instead of instead of destroying the object, I might destroy the object after like 
uh, five seconds, but what I can do is I can also... So destroy this game object after five seconds. Uh, destroy this. Um, destroys the enemy component. Uh, and then we can do this.gameObject.add component. Uh, and we can add a rigid body to this enemy so that the enemy actually like falls over when you shoot it again. And that can be kind of fun. Yes, come on. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And it'll eventually, you know, destroy itself. And we could build a coroutine where it gets smaller over time until it, you know, fades away to nothing. All sorts of fun stuff like that. Um, so that's taking damage. Yeah, that's taking damage. Uh, well, I guess one more thing I wanted to do is I wanted to change void start for the enemy to be a random range between like 8 and 16. And then the bullet damage amount uh, could also be a random if we wanted to, so that each bullet could do a random amount of damage. But again, that's all just easy programming stuff. See you in the next one.